This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show. And folks, we are celebrating. We are celebrating 25 years of clerks here on Python's Paradise. And folks, I have a wonderful guest on the phone from Clerks. Uh, it's not Brian O'Halloran because he's not supposed to be here today. But we got somebody here. She's got lasagna. She's got nail polish. And, you know, she might even have a fire extinguisher just in case, you know, those Chulis gum reps happen to be in here, you know. I have the lovely, the beautiful Marilyn Gigliotti on the phone with me. Did I get your last name right or did I screw that up? You know what? People have butchered it immensely. It's like you—you you didn't butcher it. It's like it's just a soft O versus the hard O. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's all good. All good. Thank you so much. Of course, I got you on the phone, but do you have lasagna? I I I make it. I don't eat it any longer because I've had to go vegan. Plus, you had to, uh, you know, give it to Brian, you know, and uh, you can't just go giving it all to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I asked you a bunch of these questions about conventions, you know. I, I got joking with you about bringing uh, nail polish and lasagna to uh, and fire extinguishers at the conventions. Do you get to do, do many conventions, and do you have many for clerks this year? Um, I don't get to do as many conventions as I would like to do. Um, I, I, in fact, last year I was only at one convention in Syracuse, New York, uh, which had a great time. I mean, I always have a great time at the conventions. Um, and I do have one scheduled with Brian up in Palupe, Washington State in June, uh, I believe it's June 13th, 14th, and 15th, or 14th, 15th, and 16th, <laughs> like I, um, uh, but, and looking forward to that one, um, and then, you know, hoping that some more do come along our way. Are you go kick him while he's down? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I, I, I love Brian. Actually, I love, I love my clerks, uh, guys. I love watching that scene where you're kicking him on the floor. <laughs> I will say that I will say it was fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't hit him with a loaf of bread like Jeff Anderson did. <laughs> no, but then again, um, it's not like a loaf of bread really hurts all that much. Um, honestly, though, when I was doing the kicking, we we choreographed it so I was kicking the bottom of the uh, boot. That he was wearing, so you know, not 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 very painful at all. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, Clerks is an interesting story, you know, because uh, it was Kevin Smith's uh, first feature, and um, you know, Kevin has come a long way, and I like how down to earth he seems. I've never met him, but I like the, how, the fact that he's not really what you call Hollywood, and. Um, Clerks is one of those movies that it looks like something a person could make. And I don't say that in a negative way because Hollywood just seems so interested in these big budgets, big budgets. And and sometimes it's really cool to see the independence and uh, what people can make. Like doing this at the Quick Mark, I thought was a great idea. And of course, Kevin did that out of personal experience. Right. And, and, I mean, for, for all of us, though, it was pretty much our first experience, and really none of us have gone Hollywood, um, and I do like that. Um, and, and, you know, I think the fact that it didn't happen very quickly, for my, and I'm only speaking for myself, it's like the fact that I wasn't able to kind of make it worked for me in a certain way right off the bat after clerks, you know, maybe that's kept me humbled. I I can, I can only try to look for the positive in, in a lot of this because, um, many a times speaking to friends, uh, my 22 years here, 
um, and seeing how sometimes people get these big egos when they don't have much to be an, to have an ego about. Um, I would I would tell friends, but like, please slap me if I ever get that way. <laughs> so, um, you know, but definitely I, I agree with you. It's it's it, the corpse is that film that anybody can make. It doesn't really need the the big uh, budget that studios give it to be able to make it. And, and that's the beauty of technology today is being able to make and create your own film. But that aside, it still does take money. And um, it's, it's not cheap living out here in L.A. And things keep getting higher and higher. And, uh, you know, uh, in this business is not an easy business to get into. So it's always a struggle. Yes. Well, we were talking momentarily there about the conventions. I was wondering, what's the most interesting, unique thing you've ever asked, been asked to sign? Um, actually, it didn't even happen at a convention. Okay. That happened um, shortly after Clerks was released, and we were doing a benefit at the Count Basie Theater in uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, there were, I, I don't remember the name of it, but I just remember that Brian and I were there. We uh, introduced Goo Goo Dolls. I believe it was. Okay. And afterwards, people were asking for autographs, and it's like, and this may not be all that outrageous. It's like, I know Brian has a really good outrageous story. I'm not even going to tell. It's his story to tell. But um, I, for me, it's like somebody wanted me to, to autograph their hand, and I was just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't, okay. <laughs> um. And, and I'm sure, you know, there, there probably were some other ones that, that, that had me curious, but that's the one that stands out to me. I mean, I, I personally know of people who have gotten autographs on parts of their body so that they can then have it tattooed. I've heard but, of that, um, yep. <laughs> yeah, I, but when I did the autographing on the hand, it was on the inside of the hand, and I doubt very much that they were going to get it tattooed there so i that i just you know that one didn't make sense to me it still does to this day it still, it still does not i should say to this day yes well how do you feel right like 25 years since clerks like <laughs> yeah it's crazy it really is it's crazy it's, it's crazy that the fact that it's like oh my god it's 25 years have already gone by it's been 22 years since I've been here in California now, um, and time just keeps going faster and faster and faster. So, yeah, I, you know, it, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about. <laughs> Talk about how you got the part in Clerks and how you come to meet Kevin Smith. So I was in the middle of a play at the time, I was doing um, a play called Same Time Next Year. Okay. At a different theater in Red Bank, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't think it was, I don't think it's around any longer. And uh, yeah, I don't remember it, the name of it. Um, But I heard about the auditions uh, that were going to be taking place. Uh, It was going, making its rounds in the community theater circuit. And so, well, we went to the auditions. We had to prepare a monologue, and I had one that I had already prepared um, for auditions. And I basically went there, um, got on the stage, did a mediocre uh, audition by my standards. Um, but thankfully, it landed me the part. Um, Kevin called me. I'm not quite sure how long after the auditions i would say definitely less than two weeks it could have been around a week week and a half um asked me if i wanted to come down to the convenience store pick up the script so i can read it see if i was comfortable with the dialogue Mm -hmm. we all know what that dialogue was (laughs) yep (laughs) something um, about a parking lot (laughs) 
What? <laughs> something about a parking lot. <laughs> oh, something about a number, you know, all that kind of stuff, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I took it to work with me. I was reading it. I enjoyed it. I was laughing. And so I basically told him, yes, I'd definitely be interested in, in, in doing the film. <laughs> yeah, I watched it last night. That is one of the funniest <laughs> scenes in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That poor customer just standing outside there like, oops, I better wander on. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Brian like, hey, get back here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, you know, not just that, it's just, just um, you know, the whole talking about what must, what some people will, uh, would, oh my God, how do we, you know, the whole snowball thing. The snowfall, yeah. Kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was so. a bit out there, yep. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, uh, I love that image we see of you on um, on the internet a lot of you with the fire extinguisher, and of course that yeah. that's your first scene where you you show up, and you b- blast the fire extinguisher at all these customers that are assaulting poor Dante with cigarettes, and of course the Chulis gum rep, and of course you figure him out pretty quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that was a fun scene to do. Would have been a lot more fun had I actually been able to be the one to squeeze the trigger on that thing. <laughs> oh, you weren't. You didn't do that, huh? No, it wasn't me. I wasn't there at the time when they they uh, um, blew off the canister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, ta- been cool though. Yeah. Well, talk about. Um that scene and the Chulis rep guy, I forget the name of the actor, but I love the fact that he gets warned not to hassle people about smoking. And then he, the next custer comes in and goes, <laughs> he continues on with it. And poor, poor Dante. I just, I love Brian O'Halloran just standing there with his arms at his side. Like, like he can't say anything. He's powerless. You have to bail him out. <laughs> Yeah, Scott Schiaffo uh, played the role of the Chili's gum rep. Um, and, you know, we're all good friends right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 I was basically waiting in the uh, um, videotape store. Yep. Um, and uh, until they needed me to come in to do my scene up on the... Uh, on the refrigerator with the fire extinguisher. That was a great shot. That, to me, is one of the most iconic shots in the movie. Of you with the definitely. I love definitely. that shot. You must get a, sell a lot of uh, uh, photos of that design, huh? The the two photos, yes, that actually do get requested a lot is that one and Brian painting my nails. <laughs> do you, Do you still get Brian to paint your nails? <laughs> no, I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> will you will you do that at the next uh, convention you're at? Gosh, well, maybe that's the thing to do. I don't know. <laughs> Get Brian to, to paint your nails, and you can bring him lasagna. I was like, we use clear nail polish, so it wouldn't mm-hmm. be that much of a stretch. You, you can bring him lasagna, and you can kick him while he's down. <laughs> well, not that easy to bring lasagna, um, you know, when you're traveling uh far from home and there's no uh, <laughs> oven and things like that so yeah that's that's not going to be a thing poor brian <laughs> oh, he'll get over it talk about uh, working with kevin smith because I, i'm gonna tell you kevin i i listen to him a lot on his podcast and stuff like that yeah. and his stand up and i gotta say i love how down to earth he sounds you know and uh and uh how real he sounds, but his sarcasm as well. He's got a great sense of humor, and I don't think the industry itself has been entirely good to him, but I do think his fan base has been great with him because so, I know yeah. he's, yeah, he's had a hard time getting projects out there because of, you know, the amount of marketing goes into it, and he said that's what really hurts when his movies get released. Well, I mean, I I know that I enjoyed working with him, and the way that that I always describe it, it's like we were all in the same boat uh, doing the rowing. It's like, you know, our first experience of being um, working on a film, and 
and doing what we could to, to make sure that this was something that we could all be proud of. Um, so, I mean, working with him on Clerks is really the only thing that I can kind of go by other than, you know, the, the, the times that we get to see each other, which is very far and few f- between. Um, but I consider myself a fan as well. I've enjoyed all this, the uh, films that he's put out um, and enjoyed my time working on Clerks. Um, but yeah, this, this, this business is very difficult. It's very fickle. And it's like just because you have a great film doesn't mean it can get made. Um, you know, and it, it just goes to show uh, when you have certain things that go out. I mean, I think the fact that we have streaming, Netflix, Amazon, and all the other services that are out there that do streaming, that have been able to put out content that probably normally would never have gotten out. I mean, um, look at Stranger Things. Stranger Things went to so many networks before it finally landed on Netflix and became this big, huge hit. And that's the story of many things that have has been put out there. So, you know, I mean, it, but now with all the streaming services, now it's still it's still difficult to get things that put out. Yes. Well, Clerks is one of those gems that came out the same year as Pulp Fiction. And, of course, uh, uh, that and Clerks, two of the most innovative films to come out in 1994. And um, I love the fact that he shot it in black and white, you know. I thought, I thought that was an interesting choice. Well, that was done out of necessity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think and it works. I love that. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely lended to the quality, so it was a... a a beautiful, what is it, what, let me say it, a beautiful mistake, I guess, yeah. to say, the fact that that happened, because it was strictly budgetary, mm-hmm. um, because if he used color, he would have needed lights, and to have those lights, it was just not in the budget, and so that's why he went with black and white film. Was there any consideration to have uh, Veronica in Clerks 2, or was that just not going to happen? Uh, your, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I, That's not something that I'm privy to. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, the, the only thing that I know is had Clerks 3 actually happened, I did have a role in that. And, I mean... The best way that I can maybe describe it, and this has nothing to do with Clerks, but, but, and I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily give out anything here, but working uh, with another director, and him telling me how he started writing a script, and 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 all his all his stories kind of have a connection to some degree but it's like he was writing his next film and something happened with one of the characters that he had in there that he hadn't even expected it's just kind of something that manifested itself and so maybe that's you know how it is for most uh, writers and creators it's like you know they're they're writing this story and they may have a concept but they don't know what's going to happen until they actually write it. And I'm not a writer, I guess, so I can't say, it's like, do I have a script that I did write? Sure, it's only maybe three pages, and it was a concept more more than anything that I have that I, I'm looking to direct, hopefully soon. But um, I, I, I can only imagine, you know, what that, maybe that's what it's like for writers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, of course, Kevin Smith, you always see him accompanied by Jason Mewes, <laughs> mm-hmm. Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, yeah. Any memories of Jason Mewes? Uh, honestly, it's, I, I never got to work with Jason uh, when we did Clerks. I only got to know Jason later on. Um, my first interaction was when we were doing a promo photo shoot for Clerks. Okay. And um, and then you know through the years, uh, so 
you know, I, I, it's not like I really know him very, very well. And even though when we do go to conventions, you know, Brian and I, we hang out, or, or Brian and I and Scott or Ernie, when, when we are at a convention together, we hang out. Um, but Jason pretty much does his, his thing. And, and, and for the most part, I, I know that it's, you know, so he doesn't get, get himself in any trouble in any way. And because many times, you know, some of the, some of the fans want to give him things that he really shouldn't be having anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I've heard stories like that about John Belushi, and we all know where that went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Brian O'Halloran, I, I love that comment. He must get this a lot. Wasn't even supposed to be here today. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Yes. Uh, we each have, you know, the the um, the trademark uh, sentences that people want to say to us all the time, and his is definitely that. What one's yours now? Well, it's thirty-seven. <laughs> thirty-seven. <laughs> okay. I could just see Brian sitting at the table for a con and uh, people saying, are you even supposed to be here today? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. (laughs) Well, I love that first shot of him in Clerks where he's sleeping in the bloody closet. I'm like, (laughs) Uh Uh no wonder he's not going to play hockey well. He didn't get a decent night's sleep because he's sleeping in the closet. Um, uh, Brian O'Halloran, um, what I like about him, especially in Clerks, is he's got this very uh, every uh, every man look. You know, he he's uh, uh, he looks like a person you'd see anywhere. You know, and, and that's one of his appeals. And people can relate to him, like a lot of the arguments and stuff uh, that he has. You know, and discussions we can all relate. And um, I think he was a great lead in this movie, and I really liked him in Clerks 2 as well, you know. But uh, although I would have liked to have seen you in Clerks 2, I'll say that. (laughs) Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you're one of my favorite characters in the movie. I'll say that. And I'm not just saying that because I got you on the phone. That's true. (laughs) Thank you so much. That really does mean a lot to me to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, Because... Let's face it, this, you know, this business um, can wear on your insecurities. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, for me, hearing from the fans is kind of um, um, something that keeps me going. Yeah, and, well, uh, yeah. Well, it's awesome. You got a you got a hit film under your belt, you know. Like, there's some people that go an entire lifetime; they don't even have that, you know. True, true. But yeah. but you know, it, it was 25 years ago, <laughs> and uh, the simple fact of the matter is, in this business, it's what 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 have you done lately? And uh, lately can't be 25 years ago. They want to know that it's been yesterday or you know last year or something like that and even sometimes last year is is a long time ago for them well i still loved you and clerk so there you go (laughs) (laughs) yeah i enjoyed watching that last night and uh talk about um you you worked uh, of course your scenes were all with uh brian o'halloran so talk Mm -hmm. about um uh I just asked for like any stories about working with him, but what's probably more one of the most standout, unique things about any of the shoots you did with Brian on that set? Um, well, you know, I, I I think the the scene with him painting my nails, I think that's a very nice and sweet scene, and um, I honestly can't remember if that was something that was originally in the script or if it's just something that we thought of for the moment. I was just going to ask you that, too. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could remember. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> I honestly cannot remember. Um, well, it's like I, I do have a copy of the old script, so I, I guess it's in there. But but um, that that's something that is that stands out for me. And it, but as far as like the whole shoot itself and funny moments, it's, you know, having the whole convenience store as our crafties mm-hmm. and craft service area. And then also 
getting fresh bagels that didn't really belong to us and belonged to the store next door. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little moment too, where you you guys get he. He tells you that he Dante says he's had twelve women before you when you slap him in the head. <laughs> yeah, that was a difficult scene to do, only because of the positioning that we were in, and it's kind of hard to slap somebody when from behind, you know, and to 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 really land. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked. Uh, and make it believable. I mean, you know, I I don't I. I still don't think that it really is all that believable of a slap, but yeah, I guess, you know, sound effects makes it so. <laughs> well, I found it convincing. Okay, <laughs> he, okay. He reacted well to it, but I love it, too, when yeah. you two are still arguing and there's customers coming up there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah, that would go over well modern day. <laughs> And speaking of which, what an, what a weird array of customers, you know, like the the guy that with the eggs, you know, trying to find the perfect dozen. And you know what, it may seem weird, and maybe having them all in one day may be weird, but it's not a stretch by any means that working in the service industry that you don't get people like that or close to that. Actually, it makes the movie more entertaining, too, you know, to, yeah, because yeah. Kevin, of course, is essentially, for the most part, in the convenience store shooting. He ventures away a little bit, you know, when they go to the wake and, and uh, you know, up on the roof and stuff like that. Most of it is shot right in there. So to have strange customers, you know, like the old guy that <laughs> go on needs to use the restroom and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, that really lends to the movie, I think. Sure. Yeah. I, I can only, I can only imagine that it's be, the reason these kind of customers were created is the simple fact that I'm sure Kevin had similar characters to those, and it's you know when you think about certain things that that maybe your mind starts to get creative in certain areas. It's like. Oh, what is that old guy doing back there? You know. Yeah. So, I, I I'm sure it's those characters were created from real people. And I'm pretty Maybe sure. Average, but real people. And I'm pretty sure he's had somebody say, "Am I supposed to drink this coffee hot?" <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that that's probably not a stretch. <laughs> no, it's not a stretch, especially when when. Years ago, and I don't remember when this was, that there were people who were actually suing, I think it was McDonald's, because the coffee was too hot. Oh, yeah, I heard about that story. Yeah, so, yep. there you go. <laughs> and, of course, Jeff Anderson, you know, love him as Randall. And um, I think he and uh, Brian O'Halloran are so good together. And I love the fact that Clerks, too, they really stretched Randall in terms of, uh, yeah. yeah, like that. Per I, you've seen Clerks, too, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that scene in the jail cell, that was, I think that's some of the best stuff I've seen Jeff Anderson do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think many of them... Um, Grew. It, the time when I saw Clerks 2 was when Kevin had a Volgarathon event in New Jersey, and I was able to attend, and that's when I saw Clerks 2. Um, and, I, yeah, I had tears in my eyes. I, I thought Jason himself had grown as an actor, um, especially since the fact that, it's, you know, that wasn't going to be his calling so to speak that's not something that he was looking to to do for his life and and that's what he wound up doing um and and definitely i mean brian i i know he has great skills as an actor mm -hmm. um and, and but definitely yeah jeff jeff really grew into his own and into that character yeah and, uh, of course, one of the big hang-ups of Clerks 3 is that uh, Jeff Anderson's not on board, and I kind of get it. And Kevin Smith has explained what the issue is, and, and I see his point of view, and I see Jeff Anderson's point of view, too, you know? Mm -hmm. but, yeah, um, many people, you know, that would be around me and start complaining, I'm like, look, I, you know, I 
understand Jeff's position. Yep. I totally get um, his feelings, and I don't blame him one bit. I don't all. either. Nope. In um, fact, in many ways, it shows how much he respects Kevin Smith and others that work on these films. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've heard the story. Uh, Kevin Smith has told it, and uh, Jeff Anderson's not in the wrong. I would love to see him come back. You know, because you can't, and I don't blame, yeah, yeah. I would love to see him come back, but I kind of, kind of get it, you know, because the industry can be a pretty feckle thing, you know, and Kevin will say it himself. Oh, it it can be more than fickle. It can just be downright brutal Yeah, and, and careless in the sense of caring for us as actors. Yeah. Um, because I know that Kevin really made some sacrifices for In Clerks 2 just to bring uh, Jeff Anderson in, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. and um, I, I think Kevin, Kevin and Jeff, of course, still close friends, you know. I mean, he did Zach and Marie make a porno where uh, he got mm-hmm. dosed. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, not his finest moment. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, being under deep fat girl, I thought I laughed. I was like, Randall got slimed, so to speak. Uh-huh. Oh, it's funny. But, you know, we love him, and uh, I was happy that uh, we had him in two Clerks movies, and I hope he's happy whatever he is he's doing. And, and of course, I know Kevin is talking about another Mallrats and another Jay and Silent Bob, and I hope he rounds you up for some of these. I, I don't know. Uh, um, you know, I think he's still unsure whether Mall Rats or whether it be a film or a TV series, because I know that's the latest that he wanted to do, whether it will happen or not. You know, it's it's tough. It's you know, he's he's got to be able to make the money, so to speak, um, or or get the funding. Actually, is it's more accurate. Um, and uh, you know. Uh, that's not an easy thing to do. We should mention, of course, uh, Lisa Spoonauer, who unfortunately is no longer with us. And uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, she had a nice, funny role in Clerks as well. Where mm-hmm. I like it when she comes out of the washroom; she looks so satisfied and surprised that poor Brian made it up to the front so quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's, she's she's sorely missed. She really is sorely missed. What was your memories of her? Oh gosh, so many. Um, you know, I we all had our ups and downs. You know, mm-hmm. post post production as far as uh, with uh, some of the publicity that we did for Clerks and and um, going to different events and things like that and and. Um, you know, but we all did our best, and and uh, but she she's she was a very sweet person and uh, a great mom, and she was sick for a long time. Um, and at a certain point, we we did con- reconnect, uh, so to speak, on uh, Facebook uh, and messaged back and forth every so often. But you know, life kind of keeps you apart in many aspects so yes absolutely yep clerk celebrating 25 years you know you got some other films i do have to bring up lake erie for example mm-hmm. yeah like um you had a good cast in that lance hendrickson yeah now i, I- wish i'd gotten to actually work with him and or even at least seen him while we were shooting, but I was there for one day and I got to see Betsy Baker, who had come in on the day that I was shooting for her uh, scenes the next day. Was she possessed? Um, (laughs) Huh? Was she possessed? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) We all know her, of course, from Evil Dead, speaking of low-budget films, you know. I'm sorry, say again? We all know her from Evil Dead, so speaking right, of low-budget right. film. 
Um, I did not see Leak Lake Erie, but I thought it was interesting they had Lance Hendrickson, Betsy Baker, yourself, and Al Snow. The wrestler always carried the 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 mannequin head to the wrestling ring with him. <laughs> right, right. I again, I, I didn't meet him during the shoot at all, and not even at the rap party that we had, to actually, which was actually quite a bit after uh, we wrapped. But I did meet him at a convention, and so I made sure to kind of go and say hello and and uh, you know talk to him about the whole thing. Another film you had listed I got to uh, talk about, too, is, and again, I haven't seen this, but you get a really good cast here, is Wichella. I mean, you had Kane Hodder and Tyler Maine, which is basically a Jason and a Michael from the horror world, and well, Elaine that Dates. One, that, that has not been filmed, um, oh. and I'm not quite sure what the status on that is, because uh, it's still listed as in pre-production or development. I can't remember which. Okay. But um but yeah, uh it it, it does have a nice uh cast set to it, but you know, and it's an interesting script and I I can only hope that it eventually does get made, but I don't know the status of it. Oh, that's that's unfortunate cuz I mean, you know, Kane Hodder of course played Jason Voorhees in mm-hmm. four of the Friday the thirteenth movie and Tyler Mame was a Michael Myers. Lean uh, mm-hmm. Dates was uh uh the the possessed version of Linda Blair in The Exorcist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you had some good casting and then we got you from Clerks, uh another yeah. horror film, so to speak. <laughs> 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 but you also yeah, no, I, I hope it gets made. I really do. Yeah, and you had another film I wanted to bring up here too. Uh, just a second, I go I'm looking on your movie database here. Mm-hmm. Because I saw a picture, and I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head. Just give me a second. I'm gonna pop that thing up. Um, because I know I saw a picture of you with a gun in your hand and a blonde beside you. Oh, blonde beside me? Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's Rogue Warrior, Robot Fighter. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Um, you can actually find that on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Tracy Birdsall, um, I've, I've worked with her. She, lo- I love just, I can't even express how much I love our scene in this film and it was my third time working with neil johnson the writer director okay um but he also wears many many hats for his films as well and really enjoy always working with him uh and got to do got to work with him again uh last year uh shooting evolution war uh so uh also worked with tracy on that and um that evolution war i'm not sure when that will be out but you can definitely catch rogue warrior robot fighter on amazon okay yeah there's a picture of uh you guys all uh shows you guys i i haven't seen this but you're both up on top of like a, a cliffside or something and you're both yes. yeah yeah it looks like yeah you guys were through a, a little bit of a <laughs> yeah they have wachellas on here announced okay it's announced uh-huh. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. And you got a few in pre-production too, like Thursday the twelfth. You play a gypsy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that that has been in the making. I mean, it was actually started like three years ago. He had to put it on hold, and I do know that Brad was talking about finishing that at some point this year, I believe. So it's like a, a a precursor to Friday the Thirteenth and Saturday the Fourteenth. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's the whole uh, concept of the film. Oh, you got, you're listed like well, the top three build here. So you got have a good size part in this. Um, it, no, I wouldn't say it's a good size, but it's it's decent. It's decent. Oh, that's perfect. Um, the funny part to that mm-hmm. is that I was just going about my business here in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I. Had just parked over at Big Lots, and I was texting back and forth with Brad, and then he asked me, he's like, so what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. 
it's like, how would you like to be in a film? I'm like, uh, okay. And, um, yeah, like over there, it's like, well, yeah, it's like, I'll, I'll get all the flight information ready for you. It's like, just get to the airport and, um, I'll have the, I'll have the information. Okay. Uh, I'm at the, I'm at the store. I need to go home and pack. And it's, it was, it was the craziest thing. The craziest. <laughs> What's the most difficult thing you've ever filmed? Like the most difficult, whether it be a, a stunt or a scene or, or something, most difficult filming experience for you? Or most challenging, I should say. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's, it's not that it was difficult. I, I would say it's the most challenging. And definitely doing a horror film is the most challenging, I feel. They say comedy is hard. Um, I never found that to be the case for me. I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. Uh, but what, there was a short film that I did called Neighbor. Okay. And so for me, having to create fear, emotions that can take you over the top dramatically and in and, and, and many ways like that, I found that to be the most challenging. Um, so I, I would say that. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Now, another thing you've got listed here, too, going back to clerks, is you've got something called shooting clerks, which is in post-production here. Yes. Where? So shooting clerks was created a couple years ago, and it is a Kevin Smith biopic. Okay. So not a documentary, but it tells the story. It is a story about Kevin and how Clerks was created. And so we all got to have cameos in there, but uh, Chris did his homework and his due diligence very carefully in speaking with everyone, everyone connected with the film to make sure that he got as much accurate as possible. Now, I do believe that some liberties were still taken with the film, but, um, you know, it, it was a great experience, and and I'm, because of much of the help that I've been able to put in and still continue to try to help out with, I was given associate producer credit as well. Oh, fantastic. You play a character named Allie Tomlin Allie in it. Allie Tomlin, yes. Um, so... I play the role of, I can't remember her real name, because all the names were changed to some degree, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mine may have been or not, I'm not quite sure, but she was the Village Voice editor who contacted Kevin wanting to see the film so that she can critique it and and, and do a write-up in the Village Voice. And this is when he found out um, who it was that, considered it for Sundance and which was Bob Hawk. Oh, okay. What are your memories of uh, Walter Flanagan? Uh, all the characters that he played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they got lots of use out of him. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> what was your favorite character he played? Oh gosh. I mean, he only shows up 100 times in Clerks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, well, the, the two that stand out for me is, is the egg guy and, and the highly offended customer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... That stand out to me. Yeah, he was so uh, wimpish. I don't know if I could ever forget that. I will never shop here again. He has the glasses on. And, of course, uh, Jeff Anderson shows him that magazine. And yet this is the way he whimpers going away. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, of course, Scott Mulger, another one who uh, <laughs> played multiple yeah. roles. Yeah. You know, the, the funny thing with Scott is it's we all got introduced to him with this big old beard on his face and and um the the time that it came that we were shooting the day shots with them on the uh, the roof uh playing hockey and i see this new new guy mm-hmm. and all clean cut and really good looking and all that and it's like 
oh shit, that's Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was quite a surprise. Yeah. No, that's funny. And of course, David Klein has multiple <laughs> roles uh-huh. in this as well. That must low budget. We all have we all have to fill in where we could, you know. Well, you know what I th- I think that's great, you know, um, because, because you get the uh, it was at um, oh Scott Mosier the, the fact you mentioned the facial hair and then right. clean cut like he he was two totally different performances and mm-hmm. if you watch that movie for a first time you'd think it was two different actors. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, that, I think, just works perfectly. Do you have a favorite scene in Clerks? Yes. Oh. It always has been when Silent Bob first talks. <laughs> yes, and he really defends you, and he makes a good point. I just I just really like the fact that, you know, when he first says something, it's, it's something that gives the entire film all this heart and and poignancy mm-hmm. um so yeah, that's that's the favorite part for me <laughs> okay okay do you have any charities that you're involved in that uh, you want to plug on here um so i'm not directly involved heavily or in anything like that but some some charities that i've helped out in the past and and i feel like in small ways but you know even small ways are in big ways um but anything that has to do with uh domestic violence to Mm -hmm. women or and or kids uh is something that i always look for in helping um and my dad he's had parkinson's for a very long time so those are those are two that i that i kind of look for my mom has parkinson's as well so i, I can totally yeah. relate to that you know mm-hmm. yeah what was it like growing up in puerto rico uh, well i didn't really i didn't grow up in puerto rico i was oh. born and raised most of my life i was born in new york in, in the city raised most of my life between new york long island uh new jersey i lived in puerto rico when i was in seventh and eighth grade and okay. uh, very happy when we moved back to the states because i i was i was states born and bred you know it's like mm-hmm. it, it, it was definitely a culture shock to to move out there i mean not to say that i don't enjoy the beauty of puerto rico and that it was nice to be there when we were but I, no i'm <laughs> i'm glad that when we moved back into the states well, you know what? I hope we get you at a con up here in Canada. Like, um, do you know where I'm located here in New Brunswick? Where is that? It's uh, close to Halifax. You know, we're right next do- door to uh, Nova Scotia. We're in uh, New Brunswick, Canada. So, the, on the East Coast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I did my first convention in Canada, I think it was three years ago four years ago um a place called uh in cornwall okay um very small town um brian's been up in in canada a couple of times but yeah definitely hoping that you know promoters will bring us out soon again at some point i don't you know um it's it's a challenge to to convince promoters that it'll be a good thing to have us there because um, as far as educating the the people, the masses, that as much as we want to be at a convention, unless the promoters contract us to be there or say they would like us to be there, contact our booking agent to be there, you know, it's, it's not something that we can just say, okay, I, I'm I'm going to be there. It's it, you know it's not up to us. It's I mean it's secondary up to us, but first it's up to the promoters. Well, you know the promoters are smart. They would reach out to to you and Brian for the thirty or the, excuse me the twenty fifth anniversary at Clerks. Clerks is really popular here. You know I've had people yeah. already tell me they were excited that I'm having an interview with you. Oh, that's 
nice. That's great to hear. Thanks. And, yep. And you know, I I know of I know you know other celebrity friends that I have that they've had their 25 and their 30 year reunions, and you know they would be going from convention to convention, like you know at least once a month or twice a month, and so. I thought, oh, this that, that'll be great. You know, I'm looking forward to that. But that, that's just not been the case for us, unfortunately. Well, people, they need to look out for that. I've, I've been, Even the one that I go to in Toronto, I go to Horrorama, which is a horror film-based one, is the one I'm normally at. I've been to one Comic-Con, but I've told them, I said, look, you, you need to look at the... Uh, the films that are celebrating braiding anniversaries because that's a major hook on uh, on uh, yeah. a lot of these artists and uh, I think clerks especially for like any of the cons I think clerks would be a, a major haul. Well, you and I think so. <laughs> Some don't, unfortunately. <laughs> well, you know what? They need to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> they need to wake yeah. up. Clerks has got a cult following, and it's not a small one either. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah, outside Clerks. What other Kevin Smith movies do you? Uh, what What's your favorite outside Clerks? Chasing Amy's one definitely. Hmm. Um. I I enjoyed Dogma. Yeah. Um. Um. I guess I would say those were the top ones. Yeah, poor Brian gets maimed in Dogma. <laughs> <laughs> Teach him to to cheat on Veronica. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It was wonderful having you on here today, Marilyn. Um, thank you so much for allowing me the honor of uh, of interviewing you. And I was ha- more than happy to to help you with your charity. And um, and I hope that all works out for you. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, and I thank all the people that did as well. It's it's very humbling. Thank you. Oh, I was happy. I was very, very happy. How are your folks doing? They're doing well. I talked to my mom um, Friday last week, mm-hmm. and uh, my dad's doing well. And, uh, you know, things are not what they were before Hurricane Maria two years ago. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, and, and even after the hurricane, the, where they are, they fared way better than many other people on the island. Um but, you know, the, the island is recovering, but it still has a long way to go in some areas and in, in, in some aspects. Well, when I saw that Facebook post, I just thought of my own parents, you know, both one's got ALS and the other's got Parkinson's. So I oh, thought, that's... yeah. So I, I, I really sympathized uh, uh, with your situation. So I, I'm glad I was aware of it and I, I was more than happy to, to help out. So I'm... I wish you the best, and I, I really uh, uh, wish your folks the best as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope to get you up here for a convention and uh, get some lasagna. We'll get some lasagna up here. <laughs> <laughs> we won't let Brian have any. <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 no lasagna for Brian. <laughs> Well, no, none for me either. Like I said, it's like I, I am. I've had to change my dietary, uh, the way that I eat because of certain health restrictions. Now that I can't do gluten, dairy, and animal proteins, and um, so yeah, I, 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 yeah, I can't do lasagna either. <laughs> oh, I, how how does um. How how do you go about that? Like, how do you go about... Uh, still figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, still... Yeah, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, we're here celebrating 25 years of clerks. Stop up by the quick mark. Maybe Veronica will be there with her trusty fire extinguisher, so, <laughs> keeping away all the... Uh, cigarette assaulters and Chuli's gum gum wraps. <laughs> anyway, uh, Marilyn, it was so wonderful to have you on here today. And uh, I was wondering if before you go, I could get you to do a plug for my show. Absolutely. And I, I thank you for having me on the show. 
I appreciate it very much, and it's been a lot of fun. Hi, this is Marilyn Gigliotti. I played Veronica and Clerks, and you're listening to Greg. Oh, see, I messed it up already. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, this is Marilyn Gigliotti. I played Veronica and Clerks, and you're listening to Greg Gilbert. And on. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we get copy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Take three. Hi, this is, yeah. <laughs> Listening to uh, Python's Paradise, correct? Yep. Okay. Hi, this is Marilyn Gigliotti. I played Veronica in Clerks. And you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Yes. We're celebrating 25 years of clerks. And uh, any, any last little statement about that, about the legacy of this film? Like, I remember, I remember 1994. I can't believe it's been 25 years. Uh, well, you know, it's like I'm still trying to, to wrap my brain around it. So I, I don't know. It, it's, you know, talk to me in another 25. <laughs> Hope to talk to you sooner than that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Thank you so much, uh, Marilyn, for the honor. Like, I really, truly appreciate it. And uh, I'll be in touch when this goes out. And, uh, yeah. All right, thank you. God bless you, and you take care. You too. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.